Hi, welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. I'm Kara, and today we are meeting up with the Lawn Fawn duo as they binge watch the day away. So we're using window scene winter screen time, trees before and after, virtual friends, Christmas dreams, the platform pop-up, and I'm using the flower market 12 by 12 paper. This one is Brunia and the other pieces to it, also the platform pop-up add-on for the back, and the window frame. And I'm also using Flower Market in the six by six pad for those little curtains. Rainy sky stencil, cloudy stencil, and I also use grassy stencil. So I'm gonna start by inking up my images with some jet black ink because I'm going to use Copic markers today, and that ink is Copic friendly. So stamping some, I'll stamp some extra trees and, and other things a little bit later, but I'm also stamping directly on some flower market paper as well to have that pattern to coordinate with my curtains. And now to color the couch. Now this would be a fabulous colored for a couch, but I, I can't see myself buying, putting that much money into this color in a room. Uh, accents, people. <laughs> I think this would uh, date itself too soon, but isn't it fun? I mean, I would, that's why we love to color, right? Because we can color it any color we want. So I'm using the BG Teens for this couch getting in those uh, dark shadowed areas. You're not going to see much of it because the kids will be sitting there watching their show, but it is a fun couch to, to color and to shade. Uh, yeah, I, I made a mistake with the couches we have now. They are, well, the salesperson assured me that the fabric would never stain, never get dingy. Uh, yeah, so I bought the cream, the cream, the light cream <laughs> colored couches. Well, let me tell you, um, I think I was in a little denial. I was like, oh, they won't stain. Well, okay, well, uh, I live with children and a dog and uh, my mom lives with us, but she's fairly clean. And my husband, uh, these, these couches, I don't think we've had as many spills on a couch since we bought it. They're, it's like they're magnets. We have two couches, two cream couches, and they're, and they're, they're magnets for uh, anything red, especially. And, and do we eat in there? We really don't eat in there very often. But, you know, anyway, uh, lesson learned, expensive lesson learned. Uh, my husband says, no, we are not getting new couches. Um, they're now five years old, and I'm just waiting, waiting for probably another five years. And Hopefully by then I can let my mistake go <laughs> and get something dark brown. Anyway, so <laughs> just coloring up the accents, the rug and the pillows for the couch. And also now putting some folds into the fabric of the curtains. And I'm using a combination of the BG colors and also some cool grays because these curtains are a stripe of white and the teal color so kind of blending those together and i did the same thing to the drapery panels as well now besides the couch i colored the computer and the desk and you can see i didn't color all of the desk legs i'm not going to use all of it so i didn't <laughs> I guess it could have, but anyway, and the little dog and a few accessories and a tree. But let's focus on these two friends who are going to be sitting together on that couch for quite a while. I used an E00 and an E21, and I'll come back in later with an E23 to darken up some of those shadows under their hair. Give them some rosy cheeks with an R20. And then on to the hair. So this little girl, she's going to have blonde hair, but I like to put in some brown undertones when I do blonde hair. So that was an E21 
and darken that up with the E23, just finding some areas I think would be more of a shadow. And I usually like the Y20s for that blonde hair. It's a nice soft yellow. It's not too bright. Uh, well, it's a, it's a nice buttery yellow. And then the Y26 kind of blends in with that brown, with the brown undertones there. Now, I still think it looks a little bit brassy here. I'll come in with that E23, darken up those shadows, and it kind of tones it down. I don't know. Just if, to me, I think it tones it down a little bit. The boy will have brown hair, starting with the E21 as the base. And then with the darker E20s, this is the E23, just drawing in some uh, different strands, chunky strands, so not not individual strands, but just to get the idea of his hair there. So this is the E25, and blending that in with the E21. So that's that's the first layer, and then I can come in with that E25 again. You can see I have some more texture that way. I've got layers behind and layers in front, and now with that E29 to give the darkest shadow areas of his hair and blend that then down with the E25. And there's his hair. He's wearing his blue jeans that are a B93 and shaded with a B97. He's wearing his red shirt today, which is an R24, and a few stripes for his tennis shoes there. Now I want to shade his shirt so that it looks like his body is rounded and so his sleeves are in front and then trying to get some shadow kind of making his arms more prominent in the front I guess. But it's such a small area really just wanted to get some very dark red in there so the R89 to make it look like his body's rounded and that that really did the trick for me. Blend that in a little bit just so that it has a nice smooth transition. And onto the girl's leggings. That's what she's wearing, I decided. So uh, some cool grays here. Shade those up a little bit. And then she's she's going to wear some black socks with that. I don't know. Why not, right? <laughs> she has her black socks. And I first I thought she would have a white t-shirt. And I thought, well, okay, R20, nah, that, I didn't want that either. Kind of washed her out a little bit. So I went over that with the RV63, and there is only an, an RV66. That's the 260s of the RVs. So I knew if I was going to blend those, I would need to do the tip-to-tip -tip technique to, to blend them. So I touched the darker marker with the lighter marker and then use that lighter marker to blend out from from dark to light. I hope that makes sense. So, but you can see it. You can see what I'm doing. I'm just touching the tip and then blending that out. And okay, now I'm happy with her shirt. I think she is too. <laughs> I'm taking all of the coordinating dies and I will run this through my die cut machine and we'll end up with ta-da with all of these great die cuts. Now I forgot to color my two bows for the curtains and so I'm doing that now and I, at first I was just going to shade them like I did the curtains but they kind of uh, blended in too much so I darkened them up and um, I'm happy with them now. With all the pieces ready to go, I'm ready to start on the background, and I'm starting with the grassy stencil, and I'm going to add some shabby shutters, Distress Ink, for the grass. Now, I decided it's going to be a gloomy day outside. Why else would they be inside watching TV, right? Pull that stencil down and find the negative for the grass, and... Uh, I think this is black soot. Really, it just it's whatever was still on my <laughs> blending brush at the time, but I'm pretty sure it's black soot. I'm creating kind of a base for my clouds. So here's the cloudy stencil. 
Gonna blend the ink across the clouds there. I'm trying to be light-handed with my blender brush. That's not always easy for me, but I, I don't want it to be too dark and dismal, but just so that it looks like it's gray, gray clouds out there, gray skies. And I'm even going to add a little gray to the grass. I don't want that to be too bright. And I'll even run that over my piece of cilantro grass. This comes with the platform pop-up as well, this die. So I have some grass for the background and I'll have those trees on that, make them a little bit dim as well. And now I can add the rain. I'm using the Rainy Sky stencil and some Broken China Distress Ink and my blender brush and it's going over all of those raindrops. But then I'm going to move my stencil so it's not in the same spot and then take some clear stencil paste and go over the top. And that's gonna create another layer of raindrops that will include some of that ink. You can see how the Distress Ink is kind of blending in with that, but it's not exactly as dark as the other raindrops. So it's gonna add just kind of another layer to my background there. While I let this dry, I'm going to put together my platform pop-up. So I cut it out twice and I am now adding the quarter inch double-sided tape to the two tabs on each of the pieces. And I use the 12 by 12 design because it is uh, it has the pattern on the front and the back. It has stripes on the back. I don't know, I just like that. I like that it, it has that extra bit of pattern there. Now I'm adding the tape to the two T's on the tabs and then on that third T I'm adding it to the base of the T because that will go in the center so I can clip that tab off and I'm folding all of the creases everything that has a score line then I can slip one T through the slit and press that down and then take off the release paper on the tab and press that down so fold it over and there it is all set to go and here it is again we'll slip that T into the slit press that down as I fold that over make sure that it's all the way at the base take off that release paper and fold it one more time and there it is so now I have the two sides for my platform and then I realized, oh, I wanted to put that rug in there. So, of course, I have to rip out that tee and put my rug down. I cut that with the uh, platform pop-up die so that I had that slit in there just right. And it's easy to put that tee back down. I just fold it down and there it is. All set to go. Well, there's going to be a window behind our viewers, and so we're going to have some acetate window panes in there. And I just added that with some double sided tape. And I'll add that onto that center T, so the one that we took the tab off the bottom. And I'm putting some eighth inch double sided tape on the top of the T so that it will sit right at the edge of that window sill. And put the curtains together with some more double-sided tape. Uh, that's probably the way I would sew my curtains together. <laughs> I don't sew. And then add that to the window. And then I have a curtain rod cut out of some metallic silver. I'll glue that onto the top. And voila, there is our curtain all ready to go. So the window is gonna be in the center. And then behind that, I wanna have these trees for the outside so you can see them through the window. But you can kind of see a problem here. At least I, I think it's uh, a bit of a problem. These trees uh, are small compared to that very large window. Now they could be way back in the background. That would be all right. But uh, I thought mm, the trees and the window just aren't really matching up. 
but I will fix that later. We'll see. <laughs> Stay tuned. We'll we'll fix that. Uh, adding on the little bows to the window curtains, and then time to work on the front layer, which is our couch and our couch potatoes. So she's got a drink in her hand, and he will have some popcorn. And we'll add the decorative pillows to the couch and add our TV viewers, our binge watchers. <laughs> Put the little tape runner, and she's going to go on the couch first because she has big hair. <laughs> so he's going to sit in front of that hair. I'm turning the desk into a coffee table with a couple of little lines and snip off those legs. And then I'll color the edges with the white gel pen. And that's what we call upcycling a piece of furniture. All right, well, I want to make sure that that TV sits nice on the coffee table. So I have a piece of thick cardstock that I'm creating kind of a, a brace, I would guess. So I'm putting some glue on that, putting the TV there. And then it gives me that little bit of a tab to put some glue on and to add that to the coffee table. Then I can just add a few little extras. So the drink for the guy and the popcorn for the girl. And this coffee table ensemble will be a fourth layer. It's going to go on the front of the platform pop-up. All right, well, I want to put it together now. So I took the release paper off of my double-sided tape, lined up the two sides, and put that tab down. And I'm adding some adhesive to the center, and I'm adding that T to the center as well. Now, I put that window on ahead of time. You can put your pieces on ahead or later. It's it's up to you. So now I just have to fold that over and take the release paper off that last tab, tuck that in there, and my platform pop-up is all set. I feel like that window is a bit floppy <laughs> because it's so large. And so I added a second window to the back of that T, and that gave it a lot more stability so it sits up nice now however as I said before I feel like that window is just a bit too big for this scene that I'm creating so again stay tuned we'll see we'll see how we change that as we go now there's a die cut with some stitching on it that's uh, created for putting a ribbon around your platform pop-up, but I'm using it as a baseboard on my uh, first layer so that I can add that couch right onto that. And it kind of just looks like there's a baseboard behind it. And I'll put a little adhesive on that coffee table and add that to the very front of the platform. And then this is the point where I decide, okay, what am I going to do about that window? I I don't say that it's too big for the scene, but with the whole platform and the outside and everything, that's when I decided ah, I'm just going to have to to do something about that. So I rip it, rip it out like I do with a lot of things when I'm creating a card. I, I rip a lot of things out, but... This one, it's on both sides of that T, so I really had to work to get that all ripped out. Well, while I was uh, trying to figure out what I wanted to do with that, I decided to put the background in. And so I used the 1 8 inch double-sided tape to adhere that to the back of the platform. Now this could be put in while it's still flat, but it's easy to add later while it's put together and popped up. Just flatten it out and there it is, all set. So now they have a stormy outside, but we need a window to go between their indoors and outdoors. So taking off the curtains and I cut the window pretty much in half and I'm just sliding that up. I think this is going to be a better size. So it will be a two-pane window rather than a four-pane window. 
I'll just adhere them together and I'll clip off a little of that extra acetate too that's in the window. And the curtain is going to cover up any of the overlap. And as far as the bottom of the curtains, well, it, they're just going to be short curtains. <laughs> so that's all there is to it. Just shorten up those curtains. I guess I'm hemming them right now. <laughs> and I'm putting some glue on both sides of that T that's in the center. And I still have two sides to that window. So I'm just sandwiching that T in between those two windows. Well, I feel like this window is more in proportion to what I have going on outside and the background. And I, yeah, I'm happy with that. Well, everything is put together and all that's left is to add the sentiment. And I decided to add that using the panel dies that come with the platform pop-up. And there's a square one for the sides and then a rectangle. And on that center rectangle one, I'm using the sentiment from screen time and I'm clipping it apart so that I can stack the words on top of each other. And the, the way that Lon Fawn creates their sentiments, uh, they're all in rectangles. So things really just, they're spaced out just perfectly when you bump them up against each other. So right now I am trying to center them and making sure they're bumped up against each other. And I will move my rectangle then accordingly because I was kind of pushing them up. So I'll push up my paper. Now this is the new Red Barn cardstock color. I'm using some clear ink to stamp the sentiment because I will heat emboss this. I have some Lawn Fawn white embossing powder and I'll sprinkle that on and then I'll melt that with a heat tool and we have our sentiment all ready to go. I already adhered the two squares on the sides and then rip off the coffee table, add my center sentiment, and then re-adhere that coffee table right above that sentiment, which says, life is better when we binge watch together. Well, I wonder what they're binge watching. I think it's Lawn Fawn YouTube channel. What do you think? <laughs> All right. Well, it's a dark and stormy night outside. They're inside with their popcorn and, and drinks. And of course, they need the dog curled up beside them. So put a little adhesive on him and he's going to just lie right down there on the rug by the couch. Now, my dog would be up on the couch, but <laughs> that's besides the point. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video today and that it inspired you to maybe create a platform pop-up with the living room scene or maybe just go binge watch some lawn fawn videos. <laughs> well, thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.